America is unique um, in this regard with respect to its uh, relationship to women in positions as matriarch or as leader. Uh, I remember being fascinated at the fact that Golda Meir became the uh, leader, the president of Israel, knowing how strong the Jewish law uh, was uh, anti-women, if you will. Um, and of course, England has had two very powerful women as leaders. And um, even Pakistan, the Muslim uh, nation, has had a, 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 a very powerful woman as leader. Uh, but America, in Germany, of course, it presently has a woman as leader. But America is unique in, in terms of uh, its, its mindset that it will not let a woman be a president. And she doesn't have to be in, in contradiction to the biblical aspect of leadership. And that's an argument we can pick up on. But there's something rotten in America that has prevented a woman from rising to the highest level. And I say this because in 2008, Almighty God said to me that Hillary Clinton should be the president. Now that's what he said. Well, they meant it for good or for evil, but surely it should not have been Barack Hussein Obama. But there's a woman on the scene now. Uh, her name is Kim Klasik. And there's been a lot of hullabaloo about the fact there's never been a woman president, and I'm not offering this as an endorsement, uh, God forbid, that I should offer it as an endorsement, but I want you to listen to her, and I want to say Kim Klasik for the first woman president, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about why she will be the first black woman, vice, or president. Mr. Engineer, if you would roll clip number three, please. My name is Kim Klasik, and I'm running for Congress in Maryland's 7th District. And like Shirley Chisholm, I'm unbought and unbossed. Let me remind you, the Democrats have controlled this part of Baltimore City for over 50 years. And they have run this beautiful place right into the ground. Abandoned buildings, liquor stores in every corner, drug addicts, guns on the street. That's now the norm in many neighborhoods. You'd think Maryland taxpayers would be getting a whole lot since our taxes are out of control. Instead, we're paying for decades of incompetence and corruption. Sadly, the same cycle of decay exists in many of America's Democrat-run cities. And yet the Democrats still assume that black people will vote for them, no matter how much they let us down and take us for granted. We're sick of it. We're not going to take it anymore. The days of blindly supporting the Democrats are coming to an end. In Baltimore, we have the highest number of black Republicans in the entire country running for office this election cycle. Joe Biden believes we can't think for ourselves, that the color of someone's skin dictates their political views. We're not buying the lies anymore. You and your party have neglected us for far too long. We want safety in our neighborhoods. We want to make the most of the federal opportunity zone I'm standing in right now in West Baltimore. We want higher paying jobs and more business opportunities. We want lower taxes. We want school choice. We want a chance to get ahead, not just get by. That's what President Trump promised and that's what President Trump delivered. I want Baltimore to be an example to Republicans around the country that we can compete in our inner cities if we reach out to the citizens and deliver real results. President Trump is bringing this country back roaring. He's bringing the American spirit to life for all Americans. So I'm asking you to help President Trump complete this great American comeback. And then I'm asking you to help me start this great Baltimore comeback. In any event that you're not politically, historically astute, uh, Kim opened up her statements with a um, quote from one of the more powerful and the first black woman to run for president, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, uh, unbought and unbossed. Uh, and Shirley Chisholm, of course, was a, a Democrat. So you can see where her understanding of political powers come from. And then watching her make a presentation, I thought about a combination of three very powerful global world leaders. One would be Margaret Thatcher, 
who led uh, the United Kingdom in, a tr in one of the more powerful leadership periods uh, and one of the troubling periods of our Cold War uh, era globally as well. And then, of course, there was Golda Meir uh, shortly after David Ben-Gurion had established, reestablished Israel as the land promised by God to Abraham. And Benazir Bhutu, who was a very powerful, charismatic leader of a Muslim nation in Pakistan, I see in Kim Klasik a combination of those three, Margaret Thatcher, Golda Meir, and Benazir Bhutu. But ultimately, I see in the honor of Shirley Chisholm, who was the first black woman to run for president, and she ran unbought and unbossed. That is, she was her own woman, and she was not going to kowtow to Wall Street in order to do their bidding. She didn't make it. But perhaps her daughter, spiritually, politically, Kim Clasic can, finally. Not only would Kim Clasic be the first authentic black president, she'd be the first black woman as well. So you would actually, because Obama was not black. Now, that is where many of you would want to get off the train. But no, it's moving too fast to get off of, and we need to understand. And I'll be back at another time to tell you about the trillions of dollars that Obama poured back into Wall Street. And maybe they have given him a mansion in San Tropez uh, that he slips in and out of, he and Michelle, as a result of bailing out Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns and AIG and Countrywide Mortgage and a host of others back in 2009, 2010. But anyway, Kim Klasik, this is not an endorsement. Uh, but I want you to know I can support a strong woman. And I would ask that the Lord would give her wisdom that she would be unbought and she would be unbossed as well, except by God's power. I don't even know if she knows the Lord, but I pray that she does in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly, sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the Word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I'm he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information. <laughs>